Let me first thank uh, Karin Hook for the invitation to be here today. It's a pleasure uh, always to come to uh, Stockholm and uh, talk to our friends here who are very much, uh, I think, on the same line as uh, what we have been trying to do you know, in the past few years. Um, you will note that I changed something in the title up there. 100% everybody will nourish the world and not feed. I have, I have a problem with feeding because, in, at least in my country, Switzerland, we feed animals and we, we actually nourish people. But, um, so I think we have to be careful what we use. And actually what we do today in the world, we actually feed people. That's, that's one of the problems we have, uh, if you think about it. So what, so what is the action plan, what are we going to do? And so the acronym, yes. International Assessment of Agricultural Knowledge, Science and Technology for Development. The K is not in the acronym, but it was actually the most important component of it, knowledge. Because uh, when you go to look at farming, unlike in many other places, knowledge is an essential element. And we actually made sure that it is part of that report, created a lot of troubles, as many of you know, uh, because the scientists came and said, what? We cannot leave this in the report because it's not coming from a peer-reviewed journal. But not everything which is peer-reviewed is good, and not everything which is not peer-reviewed is good, but I think we made a good job in sorting out you know, what was right and wrong. So I think, just to say that it was really a, a very unique process uh, to uh, bring forward okay, an action plan, actually way back then. I'd like to remind you that this was actually operating uh, between 2004 and 8. That's when the whole report was sort of uh, uh, written uh, over a period of four years. And um, in 2009, in, in April, um, that's no, in two, April 2008, that's when we had the plenary in Johannesburg, and that's where basically uh, what 59 countries signed on this report uh, to do something. The question is, or the, the sad story is that until today, we're still waiting for implementation of many of those suggestions there. And there's one element, uh, piece I will mention later on of something which has changed, which we can uh, go back to this report. <clears throat> and there's many, been many reports since, as you can uh, see here, you know, we saw people start to write and write, but in the end, I think uh, this uh, agriculture at the crossroads is still, I think, the, 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 the main uh, report, even today, the mother of the reports in agriculture, which I think we try to base uh, the way forward onto. And on the key findings, I will not go into detail everything because you know, I'm the last speaker, so everything has been said, except that I'll add a few more things. But um, I think we, we, many points have been touched on, and uh, so I'll, pardon me if I just jump over some of them, because uh, I think it's uh, good to have time to discuss at the end, and also because I want to add a few things which is on, or not on the slides. Um, so one important point is that we gr grow today, or we produce food for 14 billion people to feed, because we produce 4,600 calories per day per person right now. So anyone comes and says we need more, then you have to say, ah, but what, where, how? This is the important part. In Europe, we can do with less. In America, we can do with less too. We don't need more, actually. Maybe we need more in other countries, but again, we heard it. We can do that. It's been said before. We know exactly how to double and treble the production in Africa almost overnight. The question always is, is why it's not happening? So again, so, so actually right now, there's no need for people to be hungry, but one of the issues is access, as we know. We also have this, this uh, problem of uh, diseases, and I think that one, one important element who will make a change happen, at least in the West, is that the, the, the health system can no longer be carried by, by government, or by the people, because it's getting so bad. In the US, it costs $142 billion a year, basically, to, to bad food. Never mind all the rest, OK? So just to say that something will bring the system down. If not the, the ecosystem, it will be the health system. So we know that we have energy problems because we use more color we don't reproduce. We have major uh, climate change problem we heard before because of nitrogen fertilizer for um, not only, but also biofuel use, or fuel use, uh, all the issue of soil degradation. Um, and also we have created a lot of social problems by changing the type of agriculture from a, an, a labor intensive one to a labor extensive one, basically replacing people with petrol. Now again, we've seen two, you know, oil peak, probably peaked already. 
which means that we have to get people back into the, in agriculture uh, too. And actually, we need the jobs anyway, so why not? Um, so, so what's the plan forward? I think we need to think about you know, what are some of the, the really issues, and we need to intervene at different levels. And uh, after having done 27 years of research and education uh, in Africa, I decided to go into policy, because if we have bad policies, nothing else will actually work. Science cannot overcome bad policies. Science has to inform policies. But our politician, politicians listening to the scientists? If you look at the uh, ISTD report, obviously not, because it's not being implemented. So, so we have to think about policies, and they have to be informed by assessments like the ISTAD or follow-up reports at national level. And the good example, actually, is the African Union. They have, we heard from, uh, before from uh, Sue, uh, the African Union Ecological Organic Agriculture Initiative. The only one I know in the world, and you can go back and be sure that the ISTAD had something to do with it, um, because in that report, which was, came out of a meeting in, in um, Ethiopia, uh, obviously there was a lot of talk about that too. And backed up with examples from the field that actually what we say there is happening and can be done. So again, so very important. Institutions need to be reformed. We need better institutions, better governance, and actually links to policies, because good policies come from good governance. And then again, we need more R&D, because if we have a new paradigm, we again, although we have done a lot of research, and we heard it before too, again, that there's a lot of research out there, uh, but again, does it go where it goes to the farmers? Again, that's one of the issues, so we need to make sure that this touches on everybody. So all these different actors have to be concerned about this and be part of this multi-stakeholder dialogue uh, forward. Uh, but food security, I think just a few words on this too, because I think it's important to understand that it is not only just the quantity out there, but it has to be available, people have to have access to it, it has to be stable, and again, I think depending on the food use is also important. How do people use it? Do they know how to use it, yes or not? So there's a number of elements I think we have to always consider when we look at uh, food security. So when we look forward, so what, what do we need to do? And again, I'm just repeating here. I mean, we need a fundamental shift in the paradigm. We know that. So what is standing in the way? And I'll say it again, I'll say it at every meeting, is vested interest from the private sector. It's very clear that all people have an interest there to actually block to do what needs to be done because it will cut into profit from the production all the way to the consumption. But I think we have to be reasonable here um, as, as citizens and, and really tackle this from ground up. So this paradigm change, this transition, I think can happen only if we really start to do the right thing from uh, bottom up. Agriculture has to be multifunctional has to have all the resilience in it. Again, we know how to do that, and small scale or smallholder and family farms are very important as we move forward as the issue of women in agriculture, so that more attention paid in from education all the way to support them in terms of extension, and they ought to be part of the research process too. And again, I think the, the, the fourth point here is very important, is we have to take a more systemic uh, view and holistic view of agriculture, and agriculture and the food system because they are connected. They're not just two different things or separate things. The multifunctionality, I like to show this slide because it shows the three dimensions. They're not like silos or, or pillars, actually, they're dimensions. And uh, again, the economic, the environmental, and the, the uh, cultural one, society. So, and they really merge into each other, although we always keep separating them to show them, but actually they're all basically one. And I think only when they really merge and they're put together, do we have a world which is livable, viable, and equitable? And I think this is all we want with our food systems. And the system, again, you know, don't, don't mind the details, but everything is connected out there. And agriculture is exactly the, the example where we can understand that everything is connected. And if we don't start to think in system, we go nowhere. We are the age of linear thinking, or at least we were. And I think it's time that we go on to a more systemic thinking and to see that agriculture has a lot to do with overwarming, with water, with the energy sector, with population. And everybody talks about, nobody has talked about human population yet. But you know, where are the limits? There are limits out there. And I think we ought to also discuss this sometimes. Um, health issues, and there are more if you look at the total system. 
So again, systemic look. And again, if we don't change the behavior, nothing will change too. Because in the end, the consumer actually defines the production. If we continue to say we want cheap food, it will produce the way it's produced. So unless we all agree that we're going to have to pay more for food, that we're going to have to internalize the externalities, things will not happen. And that's why we throw away 50% of what's been at post, uh, post farm gate in the West. Okay? So this is enormous. So that's why I think we need to change. And so more diversity, we heard that before too. And the way we actually eat also has uh, basically a direct, is direct in, in connection with the environment. So again, we heard before, uh, a, a diet heavy in meat will actually have a very high, uh, big footprint uh, versus the contrary to eat more fruit vegetables, for example. So again, we as consumers actually can define you know, the state of the world in the years to come. Um, and the green way ahead is knowledge intensive. It is more complicated to make compost than to throw a bag fertilizer out in the field. A whole lot more complicated. And again, so that's why we need more and better education out there, extension services. We have the tools. We have a lot of information technology out there. Are we using them? No. And so, okay, because it's very local, so we have to have very local type of extension and research. If not, again, it doesn't work. You cannot do sort of research in Europe and think this is good for Africa, like has happened in the past. A lot. Too much. So we need this transition going from the conventional, the productivist system, to appear on the right-hand side, a system which is actually sustainable, but productive. But productive not in terms of yield per hectare. We don't really care too much about that. What we want is productivity at the farm level, from a com complex and integrated system, animal and plants. So that's, that's what basically we want to go to this multifunctional system. Again, we know how to do it. But the discussion always comes, and just watch Nature next week, or maybe already this week, there's yet another article saying that, oh, organic cannot feed the world because it produces only 80% of conventional. Hey, we should be happy. We produce 4,600 calories per person already. We can do it less. Again, the right thing in the right place by the right people. So, so, so this is what it is. And so, so again, so when you look at this, oh, we cannot feed the world, 9.5 billion people and all this, actually the response is, just go back number one there, because that's how we're going to do it. And that's how we have to do it. And can it be done? Well, we have done some modeling. You heard before from uh, Nick, uh, the Green Economy Report. I was actually the person behind the agricultural chapter in there. And my institute did all the models behind this. And I'll show the results. So if we invest our money in a green agriculture, Excuse me, the brown, because the brown is actually has another connotation, because brown, brown is like the dirty agriculture. In agriculture, okay, I mean, I know what Sue meant with uh, being brown and the soil. But here we're talking about a green agriculture re redesigned. So basically, we're going to prevent pre-harvest losses. Again, more training using biocontrol, biopesticide, for example, better management practices. Uh, we're going to do more research, again, in agronomy, in soil science. And we're going to try to breed some new varieties also, uh, more diverse crops. And also small-scale mechanization, because young people not, won't go and be farmers if they have, this is back-breaking. But we can be smart about machinery too. And we have to. Um, and then also uh, less uh, losses at food processing. So if you do all this and look at the system, because everything is connected in there, that's how the model works, all the feedback loops, uh, by 2050, you see green and BA, this business as usual. Uh, so, right, so let's uh, go through this. Oops, no, sorry. So the production is up in terms of value. The crops, actually just the crops, not all, you know, that's uh, just the, the green stuff, is up. Uh, employment is up by almost 40 million people. We need more jobs. If you do all green, we have more jobs and good jobs. This is actually quality jobs. The soil quality is up, one third almost. Water use is down. We just heard before we use too much water. Um, the harvested land is down. Hey, man, we use less land doing it right. Uh, deforestation, look at that. Almost 50% less uh, deforestation. And the calories, 2,500 per person in average per, per day. 
This is really enough. That's enough. So we're okay. We can do it. So to conclude then, in terms of what we do, so we need a change. And again, you know, we are sort of like-minded people here, I'm sure. I haven't heard anybody jumping up and down when I said that we have to go organic. Um, so again, so we have to take a more a medium and long-term view of things. You know, we are taking too much the short-term view all the time. And again, the systemic view. We have to invest more, again, in agroecological research and extension. That's what we have to put. We have done 50 years of industrial agricultural research at the cost of government, at your cost, taxpayers. What do you get for it? Big Monsanto, big Syngenta, uh, big fertilizer company, uh, next country next door, right? So what do, we, what do you get from that? We get a mess. That's all we get. Um, do we need to uh, focus? We need to focus more on the finality of agriculture and food systems. It is health. We want to be healthy. Healthy people, healthy planet. And we want diversity, so we want diverse food. We don't, you know, if, according to Monsanto and others, even the US government and probably USAID and the Gates Foundation, we could just be eating maize. Look at what they're doing in Africa, promoting maize, maize, and maize, and killing people at the same go because of aflatoxins. It's loaded with aflatoxins. When sorghum actually will be the alternative, the right one. Um, support changing governance. All the subsidies things, the perverse subsidies, it has to change. We spend every year $380 billion in subsidies in the North. And then we want to fix the problem with $10 billion uh, in agricultural research. Again, you know, it cannot work. We see the differences. And um, again, invest in enabling conditions. And why is this important? Because we want to make sure that the people stay in the rural areas. So if there's no hospitals, if there's no schools there, no roads, no internet, no power, young people will not stay. They have kids, they have children, they want to educate them, so they go into the cities. It's not only just the job, there's many other things we have to do. So we have to invest in those in every condition. So, last slide. Stockholm, 32, right? That was 72, so that's 40 years ago. There's a meeting going on right now. All the way to Rio plus 20. So, what I want to show here with this slide is that th these meetings have created a number of organizations. UNFCC, the climate change one, the biodiversity one, and uh, uh, the, uh, the combating desertification. These were out of Rio uh, 20 years ago. And then, in 2002, at the Jobox Summit, IASDD was sort of created. But it was not really a convention, it was not really something permanent. But in 2011, somebody created the international um, a platform for biological diversity and ecosystem services. But this is us four fingers. We have not hung. All those four organizations which exist now have something to do with everything and also agriculture, but none has it as a mandate. And so we need something which is mandated in agriculture. That's the IACD. So what we're expecting now in Rio is that somebody will stand up there at this meeting and say, we need also agriculture as sort of as a convention or a bigger body to push it. So the thumb, without thumb you can do nothing, as you know. So, so we hope that at least we go to Rio, uh, we can uh, promote more, I think, the assessment as the basis for informing policies as we move forward. Because um, governments need, need to develop policies. Now, on what basis do they do that? Is always the question. If it's not on an assessment like this one, multi-stakeholder, not an assessment based on a few consultants who write the report, or who actually also had a payroll of Monsanto, usually, or something else. So we cannot do it. And where is the official body that already exists? There's the, the, the Committee on World Food Security. Within FAO, there's a, a, a committee there, and they could actually host as an ISCD uh, uh, um, type process to inform the policies at national level via national, regional, and international assessments. Thank you very much.